down now to uh, item E, which is a contract for an owner's representative services for the city hall construction project. And Layla, why don't you bring us up to speed on that one? Well, this is so exciting, Mayor, uh, for me. It should be for the city um, and for all of us. So I'm so pleased today to get to bring this item to you in particular. So I just wanna highlight the reason why this is so important is this is, I think the biggest step the city's taken in 30 years to advance towards a city hall. Cause I've been going back through the records and city councils has been talking about a city hall since the early nineties. Um, so, so this is a big deal and y'all have done some rounds of you know, design, but hiring an owner's rep is really um, a big step in the right direction. So we actually, we start really hitting the ground hard. Um, so I'm very excited. We went through a very um, thorough process. So we did a competitive request for proposals process. So that's the full thing. We put it out on the bid network. We um, solicited as many folks that we know that did this kind of work. Um, and we received um, four proposals from some really good swap quality firms. I mean, I was really pleased with the um, range of folks that applied for, um, for this, this, uh, this job. It's, it's kind of a thing when you get that kind of quality of firm applying. Um, we selected three folks um, from that for interviews and uh, three firms. And we based the selection on, so we first evaluated the proposal. So it was myself, um, Councillor Spegman and Councillor Kozlowski that um, did the scoring. And we looked at things like, what is their capacity and experience, their community engagement experience? That was kind of a really big thing for us. Their experience with civic facilities, um, experience with construction management general contractor, it's a type of contract form. Um, what their experience was working with contractors using that sort of contracting method, um, what methods they proposed and their cost. So those are the things that we evaluated the four, we selected the top three, and then we interviewed and the interview had similar um, criteria. And then we selected the top firm and the top firm was Clash Inc. And I have today, I think David Dwyer and Jim Williford are here today, and I would like it if they could take a moment um, here to introduce themselves and just talk briefly about what their role will be on the project. Uh, and then I'll go through kind of what the phasing of the project looks like and talk a little bit more about the contract details. So. My screen's a little small because I have this up, but David or Jim, would you like to, I'll stop sharing for a moment and you can jump on screen. How does that sound? Yeah, can you hear me? We can hear you, yes. I don't, <clears throat> can you see me? <laughs> we cannot see you. Okay, well, <clears throat> I'll just say that uh, both Jim and, oh, I'm getting a notice here. Hold on, Layla, something telling me that I am, Host is asking you to start your video. Okay. Oh, there you are. There you are. Okay. Hey, hi everybody. How are you? <clears throat> uh, my name is David Dwyer. Super excited to be part of this project. Um, thank you for the introduction and uh, to the mayor, to the counselors, to the community, those who are part of this process. We, uh, I know I can speak for Jim and Klosh Group. Uh, we are very excited to be part of this job and. You know, based on the history of this job, I know everybody's super excited. I could see it, you know, in your eyes and the head nod. So we are dedicated to those project objectives and delivering a, a project for you, for this community that meets those goals. And whatever that means for us to do, we're going to bring all our resources and our experience. And you can see you were sharing the screen for a moment there, Layla, about yeah, I can go back. A little back bit of our it. resume. That just, you know, some bullet points to to look at. Uh, yeah. You know, between Jim and I, um, Jim is a consummate professional, a, a ton of experience uh, on the coast with civic jobs, um, a great uh, articulate communicator, uh, strong with community engagement, uh, both of which we share that, um, that passion around bringing. Uh, clarity where there's ambiguity and bringing uh, refining and and honing in on um, problems and solving those problems creatively 
um, that are cost effective. Um, so I say all that that you know you can see the the bullet points there on the on the screen. Some of the things we've done. Uh, I don't need to necessarily read all that, but I'll just say that uh, we are super excited. We thank you for selecting us. It's very humbling. Um, to be part of this. Uh, we're, like I said, we're super excited. Can't wait to get started. Um, so anyway, Jim, you want to add anything to that? Uh, kind of stole all the thunder there, boss. Uh, <laughs> I, I would say, uh, yes, uh, I'm also very excited. Um, uh, um, uh, really looking forward to engaging with the community and, uh, and helping to build consensus and and, uh, and and really start making traction on with this project. So I, I can't wait to get going. Great. Well, thank you both so much for being here. And as you can see from um, their CVs here, there's, there's a bit of experience in terms of development. So I know we're going to benefit a great deal from that. Um, and just so far, I have to say, like negotiating contracts, uh, these guys have been easy to work with um, and have helped kind of work through some complicated things. So that's always a good indication um, as you start to enter into a project. So I think we have our first meeting tomorrow. And Get, assuming everything goes according to plan tonight. Um, we're looking forward to getting started. So just to kind of get folks up to speed too, um, we, have, we have split the project into two phases. And I did want to highlight that here um, for an important reason, which is really so that the public understands to how this project will move forward. Because it is a huge milestone to get our OR on board. And then once the OR is on board, we're gonna start doing things like preparing a project timeline and starting to really pull together um, what this looks like. Um, I did wanna highlight that we are splitting this into two phases. And, I, and when I do my update at the end of the night about where we are with City Hall construction project overall, kind of go through that PowerPoint I've been using for the last several months to talk about how this split works. And it's, it's a little bit different than what I have been talking about in, in the sense that it slows down the process just slightly. Um, and so phase one, the real focus on this is going to be um, master planning the site and getting the building to about 30% design. And I'll talk a little bit more later about why that is. But what we wanted to do is set this project up for success. And so concurrent to phase one, happening, the council will be having discussions about financing and how we're going to pay for the project. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in my later PowerPoint. But I just wanted to highlight that we structured the contract to be in two phases. The council will determine when we move into phase two. And then that's when we complete design and we start moving into construction. So um, the Clash group is really understanding of why it was important for us to sort of break this into two phases. I think it will set us up for success. And they just had some really great ideas about how we can advance through phase one. And so I'm really looking forward to leveraging all that brain power um, between Jim and David to get us to a project that's just not only affordable, but is just awesome. And that we're able to build, um, you know, in a, in a meaningful time frame because every day that goes by just changes things. Um, so we're looking forward to getting really kicked off. So with that, and I'm also happy to take any questions, I think David or Jim would too, but we are asking you to approve this resolution authorizing me to execute the agreement with Klosh um, in an amount not to exceed 126.038. That's all I have any questions for, uh, for Layla or the two gentlemen from Klosh? Layla, if... Um... If you could just very briefly, um, for the benefit of the public, just uh, tell us a little bit more about the concept of an owner's uh, representative. I, I feel like having been part of the process, you schooled me on it and I understand it myself, but it does, uh, it is a hard concept to understand if you're not familiar with this kind of a project and it, it's somewhat different perhaps from a project manager, which we had utilized it earlier in this project. So could you just let us know uh, why this is a, not only a good deal for the city, but a, a, a critical uh, uh, expenditure? Oh, sure. And thank you for reminding me to do that. I'm gonna go back to these guys just for a moment to highlight that one of the main things that when you bring somebody in who's an owner's rep is the experience and construction that they have. 
So oftentimes these folks are really schooled in this stuff. They've been in the business. They've either been contractors or they've been involved. So they bring such a high level of knowledge in terms of the development process. And they end up being, you know, their owner's representatives. So they, you know, they work for us. They're there to ensure that our interests are being met and they speak the same language as the contractor and as the architect. I speak a little contractor and a little architect, but as you can see, I've now got 50 years of experience behind me with folks that actually understand some of the really detailed stuff, which actually leads to things like cost savings. And the old adage I've heard is that an owner's rep, you should save as much money as you're spending on your owner's rep through the process. And I feel extremely confident that with these two gentlemen um, working with me, they, we will achieve that. So what they will do is really, um, they do a lot of, they, they really serve as my main kind of, my main cabinet of folks. They help me design the budget. They help design the timeline. They know from their experience, a lot of things that could go wrong, that will go wrong, that should go wrong and can help prepare us and me for those uncertainties. And by working through the budget, being very iterative through that budget, they will also help me set up all of the community outreach and engagement. Um, so really an essential kind of right arm um, to me and in the development process. Because I think that folks, you know, a development like this is, it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of, of effort and coordination and organization. And so the owner's rep really takes on a lot of that um, sort of day to day. So in a good example, um, a simple example of what an owner's rep can do is when you get through the design process, you invariably have to go through a process called value engineering, where you get your first cost and you're like, whoa, that's more than we can afford. And so you go through a series of, of sort of processes where you are kind of eliminating or changing things. And so having someone like David or Jim at the table is that they can help evaluate all those different options. Say if we have to change a type of material on you know, the siding on the out exterior of the building, these guys work with the architect. They come up with all the different options. They, through their experience, can evaluate. That's no good. This is good. This is okay. Then they can give me the advice of like, here are the options. Here's why we cut these. Here are the things we think would work. And here are the pros and cons of those. And then that allows me as the owner to make an informed decision. Um, and their experience and understanding of you know, construction, construction materials, all of those things really um, bring so much value because then I can make an informed decision as opposed to trying to figure out and guess all that stuff myself or rely on a contractor to tell me, oh, this will work or an architect who might want a fancier siding that may not hit my budget mark. They can really help us through a lot of that. So that's just like one tiny example of just, I think the deep value that an owner's rep brings and it should give the city, it certainly gives me confidence as the sort of chief agent of the city on this project that I'm gonna build you something that we can not only afford, but that has the best materials in there that we could possibly get. And that with, with having these two gentlemen at our side, I feel like we will be really well positioned for a very successful project. So hopefully that helps describe some of the, the value that these folks bring to the table. Thanks. Any other questions from the council here? I just had one uh, quick comment for Layla and, and I'm, uh, that is to make certain that the uh, draft agreement has been looked over by our city attorney. Um, oh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, and you should know. <laughs> I figured the answer was yes, but oh yes, yes, yeah. You should know that uh, that like anything that comes to you at this point forward has been thoroughly reviewed by the city attorney. But thank you for pointing that out, Councilor Nuttall. Okay, is there any uh, comment or questions from the uh, general public on this issue? I have no public comment. Okay, well, it's uh, time to move forward and approve this resolution authorizing the city manager to execute this uh, personal services contract. Can I have a motion from someone? 
Linda, you're muted. I, uh, I will move to approve the resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a personal services agreement with Klosh Inc. for the purpose of providing owner's rep representative service in the amount not to exceed $126,038. And I just have to put an extra exclamation point behind that. This is a really great team. And I think we're going to get huge value from that investment. Awesome. Thank you. <clears throat> and we take that seriously and we will earn our keep. We you do better. every job. <laughs> Definitely. So thank you for your trust and confidence in us. Do I need a second on the motion? I'll second it. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the resolution authorizing the city manager to execute this contract. All in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed say nay. Unanimous approval. Thank you very much. And we look forward. I'm pretty excited too about going forward. <laughs> it's this kind of stuff gets you excited. It feels yeah. really good. Yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, gentlemen, we're going to, and ladies, we're going to move forward to item F, which is uh, we're going to, and part of this process, this is in uh, declaring. Uh, the old city hall property at 543 Lanita Supra's property uh, were required to hold a public he hearing. So I'm going to adjourn the city council meeting. And as of 7-11, I'm gonna open up, up a public hearing on declaring this property surplus. As of 7-11 this evening. Okay, do we, do we have anyone from the public who wants to make a comment about us declaring the property at 543 Lanita as surplus property. I have no comments, Mayor. Well, just wait a minute here. Anybody a chance in case someone wants to say something. While we're waiting, I could just note that we're not actually required to hold the public hearing, but the council agreed and I suggested that we should just as an opportunity is good practice for the community to have an understanding of, and an opportunity to weigh in should they choose to. Um, no harm if they don't, but that's um, to think good practice and appreciate the council being open to um, having this hearing tonight. Okay. Well, it looks like we don't have any comments, so I'm as of 7.13, I'm going to close the public hearing and reopen the city council meeting. And with that, now we're going to discuss the properties. Um, why don't you tell us what we're doing? <laughs> we lost the train of thought. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sure. Well, what I'm asking Facing you to do out. Today, <laughs> What are we doing? Um, so what I'm asking you to do today is to pass a resolution that would officially declare the property surplus. And that would basically authorize me to move forward with selling it. Um, I just kind of wanted to highlight for the community, just to remind folks of kind of what and why the, the property has been vacant since 2020. Um, I think we're all aware that there's some mold and other environmental contaminants that were discovered. The staff are now in this temporary facility, which we'll be in for a while. Uh, the facility has been outgrown for years. In fact, I was looking back at documents um, from the 1990s, and there was even a committee formed back then to look at acquiring adjacent property to expand City Hall. I think this was in 1997. So, um, and then we purchased the property at Underhill, I believe in 2017, for the express purpose of buying a City Hall. So the discussion has been we'll sell this to help fund the new city hall. So, so the resolution also includes information in there that ensures that whatever proceeds that come from the sale of this property will be put into the city hall expansion fund. So yeah, the action tonight is for, um, for you to consider and approve a resolution that would uh, declare the property surplus. And I'll stop sharing. Those are any questions from the council? We got this. Uh, we're being asked to approve resolution 2121. It's a resolution of the city council to declare the real property owned by the city at 543 Lanita as surplus and authorizing city manager to sell the property for the purposes of funding a new city hall. 
So moved. Can I have a second? Second. All right, further discussion? All in favor of uh, this resolution say aye. 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 Anyone opposed say nay. Okay, thank you. I, I will make one comment, uh, Mayor, and this is sure. uh, more for the good of the order, and that is that the Public Works Department go and grab the Manzanita City Hall sign uh, at their convenience because I could see us incorporating that uh, into a new building as some sort of a. I mean, we've all looked at that from at least a number. Well, if you haven't noticed, that is now hanging over our new temporary city hall. Oh, is it already gone? I had to move yeah. it. <laughs> oh, okay. I had I had asked about that way back when we were uh, for something else, and it was yeah. still there the last time I looked. So no, I, it, I don't know when they did it, but I, I was getting confused. Day. I was oh. getting confused and trying to tell people where to come. I'm like city hall, and they'd show up on Lanita. So I had I had to Dan move it. I think about two weeks ago. Oh wow! Okay, well, yeah. we should save it though because I yeah. think that there might be an opportunity in a new building to historically have it as just kind of a fun thing to have. Yeah, it's a cool uh, sign. It looks really good out front. You can't miss it because it's <laughs> compared compared to the size of the building, it's way oversized. <laughs> but anyway, we like our little building. It's it's fine for now. <laughs> And okay, we're going to move on to item G, which the discussion is how we're going to put this piece of property up for sale. And we spent uh, a little, well, quite a bit of time this afternoon discussing our options on that. And I, I think we kind of all kind of came to a consensus, but let's uh, review what we talked about. You want to re review what our uh, two options are again, Layla? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. So yes, yeah, so I'm asking council for direction today on how to sell the property. Uh, there are two key options that we have, a bid process and sort of a traditional broker process. The bid process uh, is pretty staff intense. We'd have to hire somebody, likely a broker, to help us with the transaction anyway and pay them on an hourly basis. We would set a minimum price, and then we would accept sealed bids, go through those bids, uh, take the highest bid, effectively, and go through that process. But that requires that staff, which is me, uh, is out there uh, marketing the property and doing kind of all the legwork around it. So it's, it's not a small thing. Um, but I'm also not a broker, broker. So I'm not sure that my process would generate the most revenue. So the other approach would be getting a broker who does this for a living. They are paid out of, uh, as a commission. So they don't get paid unless the property actually sells. Um, and so I think that um, those are the two kind of key options that we discussed this afternoon and looking tonight for council to make a motion to direct uh, me on which method to use to sell the property. So uh, we have, have some more discussion on that. It, it sounded like we were moving towards uh, getting a broker to help us sell this property because I, as I mentioned, this afternoon, if we were a larger municipality where we had lots of property and doing a bid might make sense, but we're, we're I think we need to custom massage this thing to, to get it sold, is my feeling. But Hans, I'm going to defer to you. What do you think we should do? Um, well, how about this? I move that the council directs uh, the city manager to negotiate a listing contract with a commercial real estate broker to list and market and hopefully sell the surplus property at 543 Lanita. I think it's the right way to go. It's maybe a little bit more expensive if we have a successful result, but there's zero cost if we need to pause, delay, change course. Um, it's commission and commission only, no professional fees unless there's a successful conclusion. Well, and you're okay. not spending city manager time either, so that, that right. evens that out. Yeah. So if that was a motion, I would be more than happy to second that, Hans. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded. Any other discussion on this? I think we're all um, saying. I, I just want to repeat some. We had a little bit of a discussion at the work session, and um, <clears throat> Hans assured us that we probably have at least a few brokers to choose from. I don't. I, I think it would be a healthy process if if we pass this motion, if we were able to. Um, 
shop around the opportunity to two or three or four brokers. And it does sound like we have those possibilities, Hans. I think at least a couple. What I'd be happy to do is meet uh, with city manager and not only recommend a couple of brokers, but I would be happy to recommend a couple of real estate brokers who may also have different recommendations. And I, they would be happy to put their two cents in. There may be some ideas out there that I'm not aware of. I mean, we pretty much all know who the pool of folks are, but um, uh, there may be somebody in town who's working in residential real estate who knows a great Astoria commercial broker that I that isn't on my radar. So uh, finding available brokers will not be a, it, it, it's very doable. All right. Hans, can I ask, uh, you talk about coastal commercial brokers and I'm one, you know, the last few, developments that we've had have actually come out of Portland uh, where they brought commercial ventures. I'm thinking of the winery and I know there's some interest in a brew process or something on another piece of property, but those are all coming out of Portland um, developers or Portland owners. Would there be some, should we have some consideration about looking at Portland as a potential commercial broker rather than a coastal broker and just throwing that out there for well I don't want to dig too down too deep into the to the weeds there but I think there is a fair chance that the representative for a buyer for that property being on Lanita would be a coastal broker and especially in the commercial realm I wouldn't say that there's a lot of animosity between regional brokers and Portland brokers but there is a little bit of that so it's just something to consider that if it is listed by exclusively by a Portland firm, um, it will be less uh, appealing uh, and perhaps less inviting to a local broker that has a commercial client that's interested in the property. So in general, I think that um, there, there is competence in that realm here on the coast. And uh, I think that a local broker can do as well, if not better, a job given some of the unique aspects to marketing property in a market where the land cost is extremely high, the construction is somewhat challenging and the rents are, are um, challenging. Thanks. Well, I think uh, between Hans and our new owner's rep and Layla, I think you guys are gonna come up with a great solution on how to get this thing sold. So. Any other questions? Uh, any other comment? It's been moved and seconded. Uh, let's, should we go to the vote? I do, see, I do see a hand raised, Mayor. I don't know whether you want to take oh. that now or not. Okay, uh, go ahead. Uh, I just have a quick question. Has the property been appraised or how are you going to determine the selling price? Yes, thanks, Donna. We did have an appraisal done. If you uh, want to see it, it's part of the council packet from last month. Okay, great. I'll look at it. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Okay, it's been moved and seconded uh, to uh, direct the city manager to uh, sell a property using a uh, real estate broker. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, Anyone opposed say nay. Okay, we got that on the, on the track. Okay, we got a couple of items of old business uh, and then we're gonna have to swing back and hit that consent, consent agenda again, don't let me forget. Uh, so Lalo, are you gonna give us a city hall construction update? I don't know how much you can add to what we've already done tonight, but. Oh, you know, I can add some stuff. I do wanna uh, quickly address a comment that Linda made um linda kisner i'm sorry if i'm butchering your kisner. name linda kisner kisner thank you uh she asked my only question is where will the ballot box go that's a great question yes. we'll probably have it relocated in front of city hall here so i'll work on that with public works and uh we'll make sure to make an announcement of where the ballot box it's funny you asked that because I was actually thinking about that last night. Um, we didn't have any elections locally, but um, it's like, where is the ballot box going to go? So it's a great uh, question. Lila, you might also need to reach out to uh, uh, the, the tax folks because I think that's printed on a lot of different information 
the actual address of the ballot. Tassio, call Tassie O'Neill in Tacoma yeah. County. Okay. Make sure you run that by her. It's her box. We probably shouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't have been her going about it. I will call the elections office before I do anything. But that's a great <laughs> point, Councilor Metal. Um, I'll just. Well, I'll that add address that. is just she's going to have to change a lot of documents, son, because that address is printed. Well, um, that's probably why it hasn't been done yet. Uh, okay, I'll I'll get in touch with her. Appreciate that heads up. Uh, cool. Okay, I'm going to just quickly do a PowerPoint here. mostly just takes the camera off of me. Um, okay, so just a quick update. I first wanted to start by saying thank you to uh, the Tillamook Beekeeper Association. They donated five trees to the city of Manzanita. Um, I think it was coordinated by Will Stone. So a big thank you to Will. Uh, these are two images from uh, the Underhill site of trees that were planted by the beekeepers. Um, so we just want to say thank you to Will and the Beekeeper Association and then Leroy Hepner and his landscapers at Eagle Landscaping that, um, that their equipment and time to install it. Uh, so four trees were planted at Underhill and one at the city park and little facts that they shared. Um, I'm terrified of bees, but I love bees because they're super important to our ecosystem. But one full grown flowering tree equates to an acre of flowers. So we have four acres of flowers now on our, <laughs> our city hall uh, future site. So that's pretty awesome and really appreciate uh, Will reaching out and uh, coordinating that gift with us. So just to kind of, you know, now that we've made this big move, I just kind of wanted to go back through my sort of rainbow of phase one process and just give everyone an update because we've actually, we've done some other things in the, in the last month as well. So just kind of reminding folks phase one and phase two. Um, remember, we kind of had our rainbow of things that have to happen to help us sort of divide up what the different tasks are that kind of lead us into phase two. So first is building the team. Um, tonight was a, was a milestone moment. We welcomed Klosh Group to our team and Klosh is gonna help us build the rest of the team. So the next key step is really hiring the project architect. And then I will work with, uh, David and Jim to look at the schedule and figure out what makes the most sense in terms of hiring our construction manager, general contractor. And just to like over inform you as I like to do, um, the point of having a CMGC early is that uh, they can help participate in the early design and guide us uh, on constructability issues as well as being at the table for pricing. So um, I'll work with the Klosh group and kind of figure out what makes the most sense to get that, that uh, part of our team together. Um, but their next real key step will be hiring the project architect. Site work. So some of you all remember from last month that we had uh, the folks coming out to do the site remediation. That work is done. I'm pleased to say that the soil samples that came back, uh, came back negative. So the site is now clean and the consultant is in the process of working with DEQ to close our file. Once that's complete, then uh, we can move forward and complete the phase one environmental assessment. So that's also gonna be underway. Um, the site has been backfilled and um, we're really pleased about that. So that was a really nice piece of news to get last week. So Layla, does that mean that there was no leakage out of the existing tank that it had, uh, so we had no leakage into the soil? We did, we removed, so that's a great point. So we removed a whole bunch of soil okay. and then we tested everything around it right. and there was no contamination. So whatever was contaminated, we were able to get out okay. and remediate. And that was our gut was that it hadn't, you know, because it had been decommissioned, that there probably wasn't a whole lot of leakage, but you got to get in there first to make sure. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions about that? If they come up later, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, so selling old city hall. So we made some big moves tonight. I'm so pleased. Um, the appraisal, as, as we know, is complete. I submitted an application to the State Historic Preservation Office for determination of, of that building. And I will know by November 11th, um, if I hear nothing from them, then um, our application is approved and we can proceed. If I do hear from them, um, we'll inform you about what next steps are uh, next month. 
And then we've had our public hearing. So I assumed it was gonna be complete when I did this PowerPoint. So I'm pleased that it is. And now our next step is to sell it, uh, move the election box and uh, get rid of some of the stuff that's in the building. So we'll be, I'll be working with uh, Public Works to start getting that building cleared out. So I like lists. I put this together. Um, you guys recall this, you know, what is the action? What is the outcome? So we're building the team. The idea is to get the team to advance the project through design and construction, the site work where the site is ready and it's development ready. And then the old city hall is sold and we can set those funds aside. So I've crossed some things off my list. This feels super good to me. I'm very happy about that. Uh, but there's still more on the list, as you can see. Um, so I just kind of want to remind folks of the, the blue and the purple. Um, so we're about to start getting into that phase of the project. And just to kind of remind folks, schematic design is really the high level design um, process. And so the goal is, the outcome is that we have a building that's designed with input from the community that's cost effective and it delivers on our project goals. That's the goal. And that we also have a financial strategy in place to fund the building. So these things are gonna be happening concurrently. And it's really important that we talk about this because I get this question a lot. It's like, what came first? The budget or the building or the building or the budget? Is it the chicken or the egg? And my argument is like, well, they kind of shared a cab to get here. So we don't really know. <laughs> um, but, you know, generally you have some sense of like scale. Um, so the point of doing it this way is that we get, we start the design process, even if we don't entirely know how much money we have or can spend, the design process allows us to really thoroughly vet what we need. So preliminary building concepts, including like the building program, where the building is going to sit. And I should go back to that building program means like, what do we need inside of the building? Like what offices, what shared space, what public space, what are the, all of that. And I think in a post COVID world, um, we're operating a little differently. And so we need to really dive deep into those things so that we are designing a building that can meet our needs now and into the future. But the now is a lot different than it was when y'all were contemplating this two years ago. So I just want to acknowledge that there's gonna be a lot of work that goes into that and that takes time. So it'll be conversations mostly internally about what do we need? The external conversations come when we have that information and we share what we think we need and what the building should look like. So there will be um, some, quite a bit of community engagement around that. And that's one of the first tasks I'll be working on with our owner's rep is what does that community engagement strategy look like? And then once our architect's on board, um, then we'll have a lot more to go on. Um, we'll be doing some evaluation of the background materials, a lot of good materials to start with. Um, but one of the big goals that we have for this first phase is doing a framework plan for the whole site. So we'll be reaching out to the community and talking to folks about what, what do we do with this whole site? We have a building, we have an office building we need to build on a part of it. Then we have the rest of it. And so this is a really wonderful opportunity for us to go out and ask that question. Um, I've heard from some folks in the community um, who have asked or have assumed that we kind of already know what's happening on this site. And we really don't, we're starting from scratch, frankly. And so I think that's a really good opportunity for us to go out and ask the community and engage with the community around what, what does this site become as far as our, you know, our, our whole community is concerned. And then we also are looking at, um, we're also looking at the building itself. And the reason why we're only getting to 30% schematic design is because that gives us enough information to do a thoughtful pricing exercise. And my hope is, is that will come um, concurrently to the discussions that we will be having with respect to a financing strategy. But the first thing we do is gotta get all our ducks in a row. And then we're gonna talk about what the financing strategy is. It's one of my favorite kids books. Uh, make way for ducklings. I just had to find a way to put it in there. But that's what we're trying to do is get all our ducks in a row. What do we need? How big is this building going to be? What is going to happen with the site? At the same time, talking with council about a financing strategy where we're identifying sources and uses and we develop a financial strategy and plan. And then it would be council's decision to determine whether or not we are ready to enter into phase two. And the reason why I um, and I sort of, I fished this out to some colleagues and friends in the industry. 
Um, 30% design gives us far enough along that we know what we're trying to get to to give us that price estimate, but it's not so far along that we can't change or readjust if we find, say, that the budget numbers aren't matching up with what we can afford. So it's a good point for us to stop and pause and uh, try to get those two things to meet. And it could be that we have sufficient resources for the building that we've designed, but I wanted to make sure that the process was set up to respect the relationship between the financing and the construction of the building. And so that's what I propose to do. This council will decide, like I said, when we enter into phase two, um, because at that point, my hope is that the council and the community have a clear understanding of what the true costs are, because we've talked a lot about costs since I've been here. And with all respect, like the numbers that we've been throwing around from 2018 are no longer relevant. Um, nothing's really relevant anymore. The only thing that will be relevant is a new look at this and a new cost estimate based on all of the factors that are influencing construction today. And I just wanna make that really clear. It's super important that we get current relevant data so that when you make your decision, you know, we all kind of know how much is it going to cost and where is the money coming from? And then we move into phase two. So that's, that's my pitch. And that's why we worked on the contract with the OR the way that we did. We'll be setting up the architectural contract very similarly. I believe if you do those things together well, you're going to lead to a shovel ready project. I just really believe that. Um, so like I said, kind of all of these things have to come together in order for us to enter into phase two. So just to kind of reassure the community that we are being thoughtful and mindful of every step that we're taking. Uh, we will be sharing, again, you'll just be bored to death of me, but I will be sharing every month kind of where we are and how we're tracking. And then working with the council over the next many months on a financial strategy. And so I expect we'll probably be meeting a little bit more talking to the council about that at some point, um, but I think it's going to be really important for us in order to stay on track. But I do believe that this has set us, this will set us up for success. Okay, so with that, that's my update. So Layla, may I ask you a quick question? Absolutely. So I, so I'm, um, uh, first of all, I think the the way you proposed it is excellent. I think uh, uh, getting a, a real understanding of what we want and and managing that along with what we can afford is is an excellent way to go about it. I'm 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 just kind of confused about a schematic design. Um, do do we have does an architect come in and help us with that schematic design? Is it do we look at what we've done in the past and kind of play with it? kind of how, what what exactly does that look like and then my second question is in uh, i i think you've talked about going out to the community to do a master site plan so that we can have a really good conversation about what we want that property to look like do we talk after that about where we site the building how does the building site kind of work into to those discussions so if uh, if you could help me with those two that would i'd really appreciate it yeah, sure. Um, those are great questions, um, Councilor Kozlowski. So the first question is, we will hire an architect. I think it's essential. Uh, so that's actually one of the first tasks I'll be working with Klosh on is, is hiring okay. of the architect. Um, they'll be an essential part of the team, but their contract will be set up similarly to Klosh's where we have sort of phase one and then we have phase two. And that's to protect us as much as it is to protect the architect as well. So they understand kind of walking in how this is going to work. I will say it's not super uncommon, just so you know. I've talked to a couple architects and they're like, oh, we work with cities all the time and this is this is par for the course. <laughs> so we're not doing anything that's like crazy. It's actually really, I think, smart. Um, so the architect uh, will lead us through that framework design. It will include siting of the building as part of that framework plan. Okay. So it's sort of like, we, I think we would probably start there is just sort of where does the building fit mm -hmm. roughly and you sort of cordon that site off and then you look at the rest of the site okay. and how does it Great. interact with it. You need an architect Excellent. to do that. I could wave my hands and do urban design pretty well, but I'm not an architect, so. Oh, that's really, that, that 
makes me feel really good. That's I like I appreciate that. Thanks, Layla. Yeah. Yeah. And the goal is, is that um, we hit the ground running, like so mm -hmm. that when we understand um, when we balance what we can afford and what we need and those two things have come together, we just launch. We don't have to go through all of this. As you can all see, it, it takes it takes a fair amount of time to do a competitive RFP process to go through and get the best teammates. Um, it takes a few months to go through each one of those processes. And so I think getting us to the point where we understand roughly what it's going to cost, where things are going to go, I think will be a really great step forward for this community. So do we have a timeline on when we're going to uh, start the RFP process for the architect? That's our first job with Quash is to do oh, that. Okay. So I have some ideas, but I don't want to throw anybody under the bus right now. So I'm going to talk to them. My hope is by next month, we'll have a preliminary timeline, if not certainly by January. Okay. Well, one thing uh, you mentioned, and I think it's important to reflect on is that even though we did it in 2018, a lot of work was done by two separate architectural firms regarding schematic design. I recognize that the world has changed since 2018 and I totally appreciate that. So some of what we have done in the past will not be relevant any longer in terms of workflow and how we handle business, day-to-day -day business. But I think we'd be really remiss if those schematic design parameters that had been developed uh, and formalized are not shared both with the owner's rep relatively soon and ultimately with any architectural firm that you engage, uh, at least as a starting point, because otherwise all that we went through uh, would have, you know, would have been wasted and maybe maybe because of the changes in life, it, it will be. But um, I just wanna make sure that we, we've got a lot of work done in terms of what life was like at least then uh, and it was done by professional firms, and I encourage us to use it as kind of a foundation to start building on. Well, you know, the other thing, Steve, which is, that's a really good point. The other thing is there was a lot of staff input into right, right, what, right. what was going to happen inside, and I'm not sure it's going to remain the same, but it's a really good place to start right? Yeah. and reevaluate. So that's a great point. Yeah, for sure. And thank you for mentioning that. Just to clarify, I think I sped through it on my slide, but absolutely, there's been a ton of background work done on this building and none of it will go to waste. Um, we'll be overloading our consultants with information um, here soon, because I agree, I think there's some value in a lot of that. And there's no need for us to start from scratch when we can start with what we have and then augment that with what we know now. Yeah. Good. I, I am that. particularly pleased with the comment you made about um, a overall site review and a site plan, something we sorely lacked in the first go round. And I think each of us has ideas about how we <laughs> what that look like. So I will be uh, interested to see how you pull that one off in terms of getting everyone's ideas out on the table and a discussion uh, occurring on what it finally ends up um being so good luck no shortage <laughs> no shortage of excitement in our future people. or ideas so, <laughs> well that's part of it and that's why you hire good architects to come in and help facilitate that with the community and get you know you start to see themes come out when you work with the community in this way and so i'm really excited to get this part started um and i think that there'll be some lessons that we learn on this site that can translate citywide so I think it's a good way for us to start listening um, and working together. I mean, one thing I will point out, and I'll probably say it again and again and again, is that we're not going to figure out a funding strategy to build everything that we decide on this framework plan, but it gives us a roadmap that we can start to work towards grants and other ways to implement um, what happens on the site. But I really believe that we need to have a clear sense of what the community uh, wants on that site, how it could fit in with our office building, and then the relationships between the two. So I'm excited about it.